Hello everyone. This iconic 1970s novel, Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance and Acquiring Devalues, may not be for all readers. If you don't mind books that cause you to contemplate a subject, I highly recommend giving it a try. For those who don't care for books that make you think, I say enter at your own risk. Please be aware there's still class courses out there that will require you to read this book at some point. Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance has been shrouded in controversy ever since its release, as any good piece of pop culture should. Many points within the book are the cause of this controversy, but the main one are statements made about our approach to determining truths. The very foundation of what we call science was called into question because of the contents of this book. The book itself is written in the first-person narrative. It feeds the reader our narrator's opinions. As a reader, It'll be your job to separate facts from biased statements and interpret who's the real villain of the story. On a cross-country motorcycle road trip with his son, our narrator begins to tell us of a ghost, a ghost whom he calls Phaedrus. Phaedrus, we're told, is a teacher from Montana, a very logical man who chased after an idea he came to believe was prudent for all society to know. Quality. He believed that quality reigned over all scientific thought, and shaped our perceptions of reality. Thinking of applying a definition to this revelation would limit it, ruin it by the trappings of society, he sought to bring the concept to light unhindered. After years of learning and pursuing the subject, Phaedrus finds himself at the University of Chicago studying the great Greek philosophers. Among Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle, he comes across a dialogue. Further investigation into the values of each party in this argument, he discovers the same concept, quality. No, his idea of quality was not new, but thousands of years old. The concept was there nonetheless, badly defined in rough terms, poorly defended in the dialogue, and shot down, discarded as irrational by the opposing faction. Seeing the injustice, what he perceived as the downfall of society by obliterating this idea, he suffers from a sort of mental breakdown and is admitted to a hospital. Upon his release from the hospital, he's no longer the same person. His personality has completely changed. Our narrator knows of our ghost, has memories of his life, and knows him well enough to extrapolate over the gaps, because he is the new personality within the body known as Phaedrus. The dreams the narrator has of fighting himself is a space within the body's mind where these two personalities meet and interact. The confrontation with Chris at the end of the book is the death scene of our narrator's personality, where Phaedrus reemerges from the depths of the split personality or form of schizophrenia. I hope this brief overview has shed some light on the context of this book, and now I'll leave you with a quote that you may find from within it. What you've got here, really, are two realities one of immediate artistic appearance and one of underlying scientific explanation. And they don't match, and they don't fit, and they don't really have much of anything to do with one another. That's quite the situation. You might say there's a little problem here.